got a little hole in it. She's been struck by lightning four times. And he puts on this. <laughs> The revolution will not be televised, not be televised, and be no rerun, brothers and sisters. The revolution will be live. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Hey, what is up, all you Stone Cold Superfly? Fish keeping fucking delis. How you living? Look, I got a package. This is gonna be my second. Is it? No, my, I did like three. This is like my third unboxing in my life. It's a day late though. We don't know what's going on in here. It's live fish, as you can see. Um, Rob93, my number one ninja on the trigger, um, sent me some of his um, polar blues. I've always wanted them. Um, he sent me some of his polar blues. He's also set, sending uh, RLC Aquatic some quarries. Um, he did overnight, 24 hour shipping express. Came a day late. Now, here's the funny part of the whole thing. The funny part of the whole thing is, is like today is like 90 degrees out here in Florida, and I, over there it's winter time. Uh, I guess I don't know. I know he's wearing sweaters and parkers, looking like an Eskimo. Um, so what he did was, um, which in my mind is a really smart thing to do, um, when when you're dealing with two drastic temperatures, he put a heat pack in, but he put a heat pack in for 10 hours. Now on paper that would have worked out perfectly. 24 hours, 10 of those hours he's gonna it's gonna be in Indiana on a shipping, you know, in, in a cold weather situation, and then the second half of the trip is gonna be in this hot weather situation. So a 10 hour heat patch should have worked on paper. But it's a day late. I guess you know, what's that? Arkham's law or whatever? Whatever could happen, will or something. I don't know, it's somebody's law. Anyway, let's open these guys up and uh let's see if they made it okay. Now, I know what you guys thinking, you know, um, Funk, you're Puerto Rican. I'm sure you have a knife to open that up. First of all, I'm going to say that's Rachel, all right? Just because I'm Puerto Rican, that don't have, that don't mean that I always have a knife on me. But I just happen to have a knife on me. Some things are, um, stereotypes for a reason. <laughs> it's like, this ain't regular tape. Oh, it's wet. There's moisture on the paper. Rob don't even know what's, what's going on in here. He told me not to tell him, all right? He said he want to find out when you find out. So, let's find out. All right. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Let's see. I got some more filter media. <laughs> Ooh, first bag. Ah! Rob is using this, uh... Rob is using, um... Breathable bags. It is cold though. I can feel it. The water is cold, so they had it in an air conditioned situation. Um, we got some albino quarries in a breathable bag. Both of them living large and in charge. Two quarry cats. I know the light is probably killing you guys with the. Let me see if I can move this somewhere so if you don't you don't have that light situation. I'm gonna do like that. Two quarry cats. Kicking like funky chickens. Oh, we got polar blue. We got a man down though. We got a man down. Another bag of polar blue cichlids with another man down. One good. One is taking the big dirt nap right there. Cory cats living large right there. Look at that. They're alive. Polar blue, polar blue. More Cory cats. Another Cory cat. A solo. He's in the bag by himself, but he's good to go. Any more bags? He sent a towel. Let me see. I thought it was a fishy biz towel. He forgot that. Cory cats he sent for RLC. Albino Cory's are all doing good. One, two, three. So he sent seven Cory cats to RLC. RLC, what you do to get these all these Cory cats, man? And he sent me a total of four polar blues, but only Two of them out of the four made it. Which, check it out. All right, so now we're gonna talk about acclimating. All right, these are breathable bags, right? They get the air, and these are actually pretty good bags. I used breathable bags before, but they wasn't this this thick. They seem thinner. These have a pretty good size membrane on them. I like them. So, the the the, the way that breathable bags work is. 
um, the the poisonous. How does it work? How does it work again? Because I did know this. Let me get back to you on that. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna tell you exactly how it works. I forgot the exact science behind it. I'm okay, so here it goes. So the material that the bag is made out of allows carbon dioxide to leave through the bag. At the same time, allowing oxygen to go into the water so that the fish can breathe oxygenated water. That's why these bags sweat because a very slight amount of water passes through. Nothing to worry about, it's very, very slight. All right, so that's how the breathable bags work. <coughs> but now we gotta talk about how do you acclimate these to your tank? Because if you drop these in the water, well, they no longer get the oxygen that they need going into the bag. Because they get the oxygen from the air outside the bag, so if you dump them in the water, being that there's no air in it, it is going to drop straight to the bottom and no oxygen transfer can occur. So what you have to do is you either have to drip acclimate them or you have to figure out some way to put them in your tank to where they're you know, a little bit submerged like that, they can still get ambient air going in there, in there. Um, because what you want is the temperature to be the same so that you don't temperature shock them. And that's in a normal house where you have um, a heater in your tank. But what if you have a fish room? Well, you have a, a tank that doesn't have a heater because your room is the same temperature as your aquariums. That's what you're using, ambient air to heat your aquariums. Well, all you have to do is leave them out for a little while, all right? Just leave them out for a little while. Let them. If, if you're using ambient air to heat your tanks, then all you have to do to temperature acclimate them is leave them out in the ambient area. You see how that works? Ambient air, ambient area. So we're gonna let them chill for a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the tanks and see. Let y'all see what happens. All right. So we're in my fish room, and my fish room is ambient temperature. It's a little, actually, a little bit warmer in here than it is outside kind of a lot warmer with the humidity than it is outside so I brought them in here they've been in here for like 10 minutes small bag so we're good yeah the, water, the bag and the water feels about the same I mean I'm you know I could have got a heat gun and all that stuff but so what I'm doing here is I got my bag my box right here with all my um my, my jokers in there right um I got this uh bucket with a net on top this is the tank that they're going in so, I thought I had a knife around here somewhere. I don't. And Rob went ahead and put this, this rubber band jaw, this, this rubber band game is on point. So, let's go ahead and take these guys out. Now, I know Rob uses the same water on all his tanks. So, I'm going to put them all in the same tank. I don't have to separately quarantine them, you know what I mean? Because they're not from two different water sources. They're from the same water source. Might be from different tanks, but those tanks have the same water source. So I can put them all together. Here's the the two uh, quarry cats, or one of the two quarry cats that's going to rob RLC. No! Um, come out, where is Okay. Even though, it, I, I got this question asked. Here's, here's my question. If you have a quarantine system, one tank that you use for quarantine, right? But you got fishes from multiple sources. Would you put them in that one tank? That one quarantine tank, even though they can You know, um, out here people are definitely afraid of, of lightning because apparently a lot of people out here get struck by lightning. Like it's a big problem out here in Florida. I really need to get a knife. I had a pair of scissors out here just for the fish room. I don't know where I went to. Let me go get a knife. Wait up, man! Alright, I'm back and I got my knife. Let me stop this from swinging. Alright, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was talking about, uh, um... You know what, let me do it this way. I was talking about lightning out here in Florida. Oh look! It's got a little hole in it. And you know where that hole came from? Just recently, um, because quarry cats are very spiky. There's no way this thing was leaking for two days like this and still has water in it.
All right, I just did something that some of you guys might have noticed that was not smart. I spilled some of the water from the bags into this bottom tank that has fish in it. I don't know if you guys noticed that. That's not very smart. Yeah. So that's a dumb move on me. Bah, bah. Let me go ahead and use this table that I got out here for this purpose. One of those foldable tables, those little wooden ones that you eat, you know, TV dinners on. They actually work in a fish room really well. I have a guy I work with, right? And he, he uh, is definitely afraid of lightning. Because he claims he's been struck by lightning four times. Which is hard to believe, but if you were to ever see his reaction when lightning, when you hear thunder, <laughs> you gotta, there's gotta be some truth to it because he, he puts on such a funny face. You ever seen the movie uh, Gone Fishing with Joe Pesci and uh, Danny, uh, who is it, uh, Danny Glover? Where um, Joe Pesci is, is constantly getting struck by lightning and he puts on his <laughs> face when, uh, when uh, um, the lightning does hit. That's what he looks like. All right, so I got all of the quarry cats in there. Now I'm gonna go for these two convicts. Now the problem is the convicts has some dead, dead ones in there. Um, and it looks like this little guy's been eating out the eyes of this one dead convict. Get in there, get out, get out. All right, he's loving life now. This Rob don't even know. He's kind of curious because I left him kind of vague. I was trying to put on my serious face like, yo Rob, the, the, the fish can. He was like, did I, he's trying to ask me questions to get an idea, but I wasn't falling for it. He was like, did I bag them good? Hint, hint, did they come in well? I was like, no, the bag job was tight. But I love the straight face. Like, no, you did a good job on the bagging. He don't know. Um, then about after, honestly, here's a, here's a, a real deal for me, in my opinion. After a week, if they're eating and swimming about <coughs> and they're not, um, showing any signs of illness or sickness, I'll give them another week. But if you're really hard up and you're, you're like, I gotta put them in my tank, and you put them in after a week, chances are you're good. No guarantees though. So, Rob, I appreciate the fish, man. I only wanted one convict, you sent four. I got two. Hopefully they're two females or two males or whatever. Um, I'm sure RLC is gonna be happy with his fish. Appreciate you. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.